In this lecture, we shall learn to obtain a mathematical model for a pendulum on a car system. The system consists of a pendulum which is pivoted on a cart and this pendulum can rotate about its pivot. The control objective in this system is to balance this rod in upright position by the application of a control force U on this cart. Uh, this system has uh, some practical applications and is very frequently used to study the performance of different control techniques. Uh, it is very similar to balancing of a uh, rod on hand by movement of this hand. The difference is that here this pendulum is allowed to rotate in a two-dimensional plane only. Uh, we have uh, studied uh, the modeling of uh, mechanical systems with uh, rotational displacements and mechanical systems with uh, translational displacements. The modeling of this system is a little bit uh, complex because uh, there are uh, different uh, displacements in uh, this system. Uh, there is uh, a horizontal displacement of this cart. Uh, there is uh, an angular displacement of this pendulum and furthermore, the center of mass of this pendulum is uh, this has both uh, horizontal displacement as well as vertical displacement. So the procedure to obtain a mathematical model for this system is to write force balance equations for translational displacements and torque balance equation for the angular displacements. This is done on the next slide. There are different forces which are acting on this pendulum. Uh, there is a force exerted by this cart on the pendulum. What is the magnitude and direction of that force? We do not know it exactly. However, whatever is that force that can always be decomposed into two components, a horizontal component and a vertical component. The horizontal component is denoted by H and the vertical component is denoted by V. As a reaction, this pendulum will also exert a force on this cart. The magnitude of the force exerted by the pendulum on the cart that is exactly equal to the magnitude of the force exerted by the cart on the pendulum. The direction of both the forces are opposite to each other. And uh, therefore, the force exerted by the pendulum on the cart that can also be decomposed into two components uh, H and V. There is another force which is acting on the pendulum that is due to its weight. If m is the mass of the pendulum then m multiplied by g that is the weight of the pendulum which acts downward at the uh, center of mass of this pendulum. So let's uh, first model the horizontal displacement of this cart. The horizontal displacement of the cart is denoted by x of t. What are uh, forces which are acting on this cart in horizontal direction. There is uh, an external force, uh, U, which is acting towards right and there is a horizontal component of the force exerted by the pendulum on the cart and this component of the force is uh, acting towards left. Therefore, the difference of these two forces, U and H, that will produce a horizontal acceleration uh, in this cart. Therefore, we have uh, this first equation which describes the horizontal displacement of the cart. Uh, U minus H produces acceleration in the cart in horizontal direction. Next, uh, we model the horizontal displacement of this pendulum. The center of mass of this pendulum that travels a uh, horizontal displacement and the distance traveled by this uh, center of mass of this pendulum that is due to two reasons, due to horizontal displacement of uh, this cart and due to angular rotation of the pendulum. This situation is analyzed over here. Uh, as uh, the pendulum rotates, the center of mass of the pendulum travels a horizontal displacement. Uh, the distance traveled uh, by the center of mass of this pendulum due to angular rotation in the pendulum that is equal to this length. So if this angular rotation in the pendulum that is theta then how much will be this displacement? Let's denote the half length of this pendulum by L that is the total length of the pendulum is 2L 
if this length is L, then uh, length from here to here, that will also be equal to L. Uh, and uh, if this angle is theta, then this length, that is equal to L sine theta. Uh, hence, the distance traveled by center of mass of this pendulum due to angular rotation in the pendulum, that is equal to L sine theta. The total distance traveled by the center of mass of the pendulum, that is equal to L sine theta plus the distance traveled by the cart. Uh, and uh, therefore, we have this second equation which describes the horizontal displacement of this center of mass of the pendulum. X is the displacement in the cart and L sine theta is displacement in the pendulum due to rotation in the pendulum. So, X plus L sine theta, that is the total horizontal displacement uh, in the center of mass of pendulum. Its uh, second derivative is the acceleration and the only for horizontal force which is acting on the pendulum, that is H. Uh, therefore, we have this second equation. Similarly, we can uh, model the vertical displacement uh, of this pendulum. Uh, as the pendulum rotates, the center of mass of the pendulum travels a vertical dis uh, displacement. How much is the vertical distance traveled by the center of mass of this pendulum? That is equal to this distance. As pendulum rotates, the center of mass moves from this point to this point. So this is the vertical distance traveled by the center of mass of the pendulum. Uh, this ha half length of the pendulum is L. Distance from here to here, that is equal to uh, this length L multiplied by cosine of this angle. So this distance from here to here that is L cosine of theta. Hence, this displacement is equal to this total length L minus this length L cos theta. So, here it is L minus L cosine theta. What are forces uh, which are acting on this pendulum in vertical direction? Uh, there is uh, this force V, uh, component of the force uh, exerted by the uh, cart on the pendulum and uh, it is uh, acting in upwards direction. Uh, this force, which is due to weight of the pendulum, that is acting in downwards direction. Therefore, we have this third equation, the total uh, vertical displacement traveled by the center of mass of the pendulum. It's a second derivative multiplied by the mass of the pendulum. So that is uh, mass multiplied by acceleration that is equal to some of the forces which are acting on the pendulum mg is acting in downwards direction and v is acting in upwards direction so this equation describes the vertical displacement in the center of mass of the pendulum here l is constant therefore its second derivative is equal to zero hence uh, uh, this equation reduces into this equation uh, there is also angular displacement uh, in the pendulum and uh, to model the angular displacement we shall write torque balance equations and this is done on the next slide. There is uh, angular displacement in the uh, pendulum and uh, to model the angular displacement uh, we shall write a torque balance equation. Uh, to model this angular displacement we can take the center of mass of this pendulum as a center of rotation. Uh, so, uh, this uh, pendulum rotates about this uh, center of mass. For some students, uh, it is difficult to visualize uh, this uh, center of mass as a center of rotation for this pendulum. They can take this pivot position as a center of rotation. Uh, in both the cases, we shall uh, finally get the same mathematical equation. Uh, at the end of this lecture, we shall uh, repeat this mathematical modeling of the angular displacement by taking this uh, point as center of rotation. Over here, let's take uh, this uh, center of mass as center of rotation uh, of the pendulum. What are forces which are acting on this pendulum? Uh, there is a force exerted by cart on the pendulum and that force was decomposed into two components, uh, H and V. There is also a force which is uh, due to mass of the pendulum 
and this force acts at the center of the mass uh, of the pendulum. What are torques due to these forces? We know that torque is equal to force multiplied by perpendicular distance. The torque due to this force uh, that is equal to zero because that uh, force uh, passes through center of uh, rotation and therefore the perpendicular distance of this force uh, from center of rotation that is equal to zero hence the torque due to this force that is equal to zero. To determine uh, the torques uh, due to uh, this force H and due to this force V, we uh, decompose these forces into uh, components which are perpendicular to this rod. So uh, this force H can be decomposed into two components. Uh, this component which is perpendicular to this rod and this component which is parallel to this rod. We can verify by application of trigonometric relations that this angle is equal to theta, the uh, rotation in the rod that is uh, equal to this angle theta. Therefore, uh, this component is equal to h cosine theta and this uh, component is equal to h sine theta. Similarly, this uh, force can be decomposed into two components. Uh, the component which is perpendicular to uh, this rod and another component which is parallel to this rod. Again, we can verify that this angle is equal to theta. Therefore, this component of the force that is equal to V cosine theta and this component is equal to V sine theta. Hence, uh, uh, we have uh, the torque balance equation which is written over here. Uh, this uh, V sine theta multiplied by uh, this length uh, from here to here that is this component of the force this component of the force multiplied by this distance uh, that produces a torque in clockwise direction V sine theta multiplied by L and H cosine theta that is this component of the force multiplied by this perpendicular dis uh, distance that produces a torque in counterclockwise direction. So the difference of uh, these two torques that produces angular acceleration and uh, J is the moment of inertia of this rod. So this equation describes the uh, rotational displacement in the pendulum. Writing all the equations together, we have these four equations which describe the mathematical model of this pendulum on the car system. Uh, here V and H in uh, these equations, these are unknown. We can use for example these last two equations to eliminate V and H from this equation and uh, from this equation to get a final mathematical model for this uh, pendulum on the car system. Uh, furthermore, uh, we can see that this mathematical model is a nonlinear model. These uh, terms sine theta and cosine theta these uh, cause nonlinearities in the uh, mathematical model. Uh, we can uh, use the techniques uh, which we have already studied to obtain a linearized model for this particular system and this is done on the next slide. Here are the four equations which describe the mathematical model of the pendulum on the car system. These are rewritten. Uh, we know that uh, for small angle theta, cosine of theta is nearly equal to 1 and sine of theta is nearly equal to theta. Therefore, this equation reduces into this equation. Sine theta is replaced with uh, theta and cosine theta is replaced with 1. So, therefore, uh, this equation is approximately the same as this equation. Likewise, uh, this uh, equation uh, here, sine theta can be replaced with uh, uh, theta uh, and then we have uh, this equation. Likewise, cosine of theta can be replaced with uh, 1 uh, here, cosine theta is equal to 1, L multiplied by 1 is uh, simply equal to L and that L is constant, its uh, second derivative will be equal to 0, 0 multiplied by M is 0, so the left hand side of this equation turns out to be equal to 0. Uh, this equation is linearized version of this equation. Now. Uh, we can use this equation and this equation to eliminate uh, V and H 
from uh, these two equations. So if we substitute V from this equation and H from this equation into this equation, we have this relation. Uh, v is equal to mg. So V is mg and theta L that is there and uh, minus H. H is equal to by this relation. Uh, H is equal to m and second derivative of x plus l theta m uh, and second derivative of x plus l theta multiplied by uh, this l. Uh, we can uh, rearrange the terms uh, to write this equation into this form. Here the second derivative of theta uh, with respect to time from this expression uh, from this term as well as the second derivative of this theta uh, these are taken uh, common together and uh, here is j and uh, m multiplied by l multiplied by l so m l square that is over here uh, uh, this term uh, second derivative of x with respect to time that is written over here and this term is written over here likewise uh, from this uh, in this relation we can substitute h uh, from this equation to get this relation uh, m uh, second derivative of x with respect to time and then u minus h so h uh, is replaced from this relation to get this expression uh, and again by rearranging the terms we have uh, this equation uh, therefore this equation and this equation these two equations describe the linearized model of pendulum on card system and uh, we are interested in obtaining a transfer function for this system and that is done on the next slide. The two equations uh, which were written on the previous slides are rewritten over here. Uh, we can simply take the Laplace transform of the two equations to get uh, these two equations. Uh, the second derivative of theta with respect to time uh, in Laplace domain that is equal to s squared into theta of s. Uh, initial conditions are assumed to be equal to zero. Uh, so likewise, the second derivative of x with respect to time that is equal to s square into x of s in Laplace domain with all initial conditions taken to be equal to zero. So uh, here uh, we are actually interested in obtaining a transfer function between the angular displacement theta of the pendulum and the uh, force which is applied on the card. Therefore, we would like to eliminate x of s from these two equations and uh, here from this equation uh, we have uh, this relation by taking theta of s from this term and this term theta of s has been taken common and uh, then furthermore this equation can be rearranged to get x of s as a function of theta. So uh, this uh, x of s uh, can be substituted into this equation to get this relation. Uh, x of s uh, over here uh, is replaced by uh, this thing and now by taking theta of s common from this term and this term we have this relation and uh, then by taking uh, this s square common from this term and uh, the term over here uh, and rearranging the things we have this relation which can be finally rearranged to write in this form by bringing all this uh, expression to the right hand side uh, and u of s to the left hand side. So this is the final transfer function which uh, describes the linearized model of a pendulum on the card system.